Uh, this is my attempt to uh, correct a problem that we've had with the original uh, collaborate uh, lecture for this hat. So I'm going to redo it um, and explain to you the reasoning behind this, uh, what this hat, this final, tries to do. When you look back over 587, you're basically looking at three different pieces that come together to form the final. One of those pieces is our discussion way back when, when we talked about the principles of knowledge form. Um, I cannot stress enough to you the importance of this as your framework. Uh, and that was made up of four ideas, constructivism, collaboration, and ideas to the center, meaning kids' ideas to the center, and questioning. So that's the first part of that stool. Uh, the second part of that stool, uh, obviously, is the quality matters. The quality matters is the rubric by which your um, creation will be judged. Now, when I say judged, I mean there is no correct answer here, folks. What I mean is you are going to use the quality matter rubric look at what it says are the essential pieces. Do you have that? But it also is there for you to be able to say, well, I think this piece, this part, represents an essential to my uh, online presence. In other words, you're not trying to get all threes. Kind of silly. But you are also free to look at the quality matters rubric and say and realize that maybe what they have judged that is a two or a one you would judge that it might be a three in other words essential and then the third leg is of course the online presence now we have switched in the uh, when i originally started teaching this class 10 years ago um edmodo was as close as we could get. Uh, well, actually, no. Um, we were using something called, um, gone out of my head, JCPS Online, uh, which then morphed into Blackboard. Um, at that point, I was also teaching a online platform called Schoology. Still like Schoology, as you well know, because it's part of one of the things you look at. Um, and there are still school districts in the state of Kentucky who use Schoology. Our problem with Google Classroom is not a problem with the Google Classroom. I like the Google Classroom a lot. The problem is how we can access what's in your Google Classroom if your Google Classroom is a part of the uh, Google Classroom environment that is in the state of Kentucky now. We can't get into that unless I'm a member of your class. So you're going to have to help me out a little bit here with doing screenshots and or, I mean, I'm not going to make this too big a deal, but if you just want to put into the final in the rationales for each one of the rubric standards, how you see it being done in your classroom, I trust you. I know you're, you're doing an honest job. Um, so those are the three pieces. Now let's go look at the final itself. And let me, that's why I'm saying down here where it says, please include the Google Classroom group code. Well, <laughs> I can't, in fact, I'll get that out of here. That just doesn't um, hold water anymore. They've got it so locked down, I can't get into your Google Classroom. I am in uh, talks with the folks in Jefferson County to try to get them to allow um, folks at University of Louisville to see into classrooms, not to be in classrooms, but just to see. But I understand where they're coming from because when you go into a Google Classroom, you actually see kids, you actually see their work. And that's a no-no. Okay, so let's go up here to where we're looking at the hallmark inside of our good friend. And what I'm looking for here is, and I'll talk about this in a second, is you can see up here, see this is where the Google Classroom piece kicks in. So these are the things that you can do within the Google Classroom that you 
if you're a Google Classroom teacher, you have already been shown how to do. So this should be nothing for you. Down here, what we've done is we've taken apart the different rubric standards, and we are asking you to then come over here and grade yourself. Now, as I said, you may come into this and you might think that 1.8 students introduce themselves to class is more important than what they do when they gave it just a 1. Um, 1.7, you might also think that's a 3. So this is not for you to try to make everything ones, in other words, match up with what they are grading it to be. Um, that's, that's a, I shouldn't say grading. What they're trying to do is they're trying to say, we think that this is essential to having a quality online presence. Uh, instructions make clear how to get started and where to find various course comp components. That's a three. I agree. Students introduced to the purpose and structure of the course. Absolutely a three. Adequate expectations, some call, sometimes called netiquette for online discussions, email, and other forms of communication are stated clearly. In my mind, that's a three. And that goes back to my uh, experiences working with the good folks up at the University of Toronto with the um, knowledge building principles. So you see, already I'm at odds with what they have done. As I told you, when I introduced Quality Matters to you, it is not evaluative. It was never intended to be an evaluative instrument. It is intended to be a collegial conversation. Now, unfortunately, what a lot of universities are doing, and mine being one of them, is they have someone who is the quality matters person for the whole university. And then they sit there and lecture you on how you ought to have your course set up and how it should work and all of that. They don't want to hear about why you think your course ought to be set up that way. Sorry, I'm on a soapbox. Let me step off. This is your way of saying, yes, I understand what we're looking for here, but this is what I see my classroom looking like. Down here in the reflection, um, if you want to put in the um, screenshots of your course that shows off this, like each standard, that'd be fine. If you just want to talk about it, in my course, uh, standard one is located here, and this is how it works. I know what Google Classroom looks like. And I also know what Schoology looks like. If you're in a school district that's using Schoology, feel free to um, go to Schoology route. I would have hoped that by now you would have let me know that, that you are a Schoology-based school district. I think Shelby County is the only one I've dealt with here lately that is still a Schoology-based. So as you can see, what you're doing here is you're going through and you're looking at the different rubrics, identifying what the score and whether or not you think the things that they have indicated as essential are essential and are they in there. You're free to change anything to either being a 1, to a 3, to a 2, however you want to do it. Reference back to the module on Quality Matters, if you're a little confused. Um, and then finally, um, this was my attempt to get this in to uh, our good old friends here at Live Text. And <clears throat> if you're having trouble with it, here it is. It's in a Word doc, in the table, and it works. So either one is more than acceptable. So if you want to take this document, let me open it up. If you want to take this document and use it, Instead of trying to get it to shoehorn into this um, live text document, I totally understand because there it is. Okay. And here in the table, of course, it, you know, everything works. Everything's fine. So either one is fine. Just remember what you're doing here is you are reflecting the structure of your Google Classroom. You are reflecting the ideas behind the knowledge building principles. In other words, kids having a way to communicate, kids having a way to discuss the ideas of the class, not just do Google Docs, but creating Google Slides that show their demonstrations of understanding about what you're trying to teach. Connections out to other parts 
of the web that allow them to play around and experience things and then coming back in and sharing that information, putting their ideas to the center. Okay, this is a very short <laughs> video. I know you're used to me rambling on for hours and hours in these things, but I think this is pretty straightforward, what we're trying to do here. Again, this is not an evaluative instrument. What this is, is a chance for you to look at what you've done through the lens of the quality matters and do I have these things in here. One last thought on that. Under accessibility, this is, and I've said this in, the, in that module, this one always kind of gets in the way of a lot of people that get really upset because how am I supposed to do this? Really, all you're doing is, and I said this in the module, copy paste in whatever browser you're using because they all have the information about accessibility in them. So in your Google Classroom, you have a little section in there somewhere. I would think it'd be a material section pulled over from your Google Drive where you just basically have listed the accessibility information, how to's that go along in whatever browser you're using. So don't, you know, don't go crazy with this one. Don't, in other words, don't worry about it. Last thought, the whole idea of this course the whole idea of this course is to provide you with a framework for developing an online presence. The idea of this course is not, is not to implement it. It is to build a framework, an outline. Now, if you want to take this framework, this outline, and then follow up with it with a independent study where you actually put it into place, you actually use different um, tools that can measure the qualitative uh, qualitative assessment of what you are doing with your kids, then that's where we go from here. So if you need 15 hours, in other words, if the 12 hours that are in this endorsement just aren't going to get it done for you to get a pay kick, and you need three more hours, then you will do an independent study with me and we will then take up where we left off here. And we will then implement that into your classroom with real kids, run it over a, a period of time, and we will then do an analysis of what came out of that. If you're in a rank one program, you definitely can take this class, do the independent study that would take what you've done here, and put it into a classroom setting with kids, and then we would measure if what we're doing here has any anything that happens, any cause effect, to use the proper statistical tool name, excuse me. We would look and see cause effect, see if there's anything going on with what this class does with whatever, how you want to measure it. Do kids uh, do better on tests? Do kids do better with um, demonstrations of understanding? so on. So that's it. As always, if you need me, you know how to reach me.